warm, wonderful welcome. My name is Victor Zanitz. I'm from Sydney, Australia, a retired lawyer. I have been investigating the afterlife now for more than 20 years. I've put all the evidence on the internet and I, by way of this book, a lawyer presents the case for the afterlife. I'll give you the URL at the end of this uh, video clip and it's free, no cost to you at all. I strongly recommend you to read chapter 6 about the near-death experiences where I include all the names of the professors and the brain surgeons and all my witnesses for the near-death experiences there. Near-death experiences are real and we have people who say they're not. So you may ask, what evidence do you have for the existence of the near-death experiences being linked with the afterlife? So the topic is for today, are near-death experiences evidence for the afterlife? Of course, they are. Ten areas of evidence. Number one. First area of evidence, clearly, without any doubt whatsoever, and universally accepted, there is a phenomenon known as near-death experience. The second area of evidence is that the near-death has nothing to do with uh, being a chemical reaction, like m through morphine or ketamine. Right? Clearly, the near-death experience is uh, uh, the five elements of it, through the chronological order, and it's totally different from uh, any chemical reaction. Number three, the uh, evidence shows that the, the uh, near-death experience has nothing to do with the brain lacking oxygen. The, the symptoms of that totally different from a proper near-death experience. Number four, the near-death experience is not as a result of uh, some kind of neurophysiological argument. Number five, the evidence shows very clearly that the uh, near-death experience is not as a result of a dying brain. Right? Because if that was the case, then everyone who is dying will have a near-death experience. And that doesn't happen from about a hundred people dying at the same time. That's it. Only some between 15 and 18 percent have a near-death experience. All right. Then we have the uh, those who have, some of those who had the near-death experience uh, were able to recall information which was a, a distance away from where they were. Um, you can read all this, as I said, in the near-death experience in my book. Now, the seventh area is when those who uh, had the near-death experience, a proper one, some of them were able to meet uh, unknown relatives, subsequently learn that to be correct, absolutely accurately identified. Number eight, this is something quite spectacular, where blind people having a near-death experience were able to see for the first time. They could see who was operating on them. They were able to see the nurses, doctors, and describing the environment accurately. Then, of course, on those who think they could just put a wire, you know, those negative experimenters, put them and stimulate the brain and get the same results, I failed to do that in an old piece. Okay, so number nine. Some of those who experienced, I'd say quite a significant number of those who had a near-death experience, became more spiritual. And there was a whole personality change, right? And uh, they went into meditation and so on. And number ten, those, many of those who had a near-death experience completely uh, lost uh, the fear of death. They feared death no more. And that is something that nobody has been able to uh, do with it, just by, 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 by uh, stimulating the brain to, to try and get that kind of uh, experience. Number 11, it's the, uh, we call that the, the dead brain, because we have the opposition that is saying that 
you cannot have a near-death experience if your brain is dead. Now, the Pam Reynolds case shows very clearly how the brain surgeons were able to virtually kill this woman for one hour. And they drained the blood from her brain. And they flattened her, e her EEG was absolutely flat. They, they stopped her breathing. Huh? They even stopped her heart rate, her beat. Her heartbeat was completely stopped for a full hour. And she still had a most wonderful near-death experience. Huh? She still she witnessed her own eyes. Who was operating on her? The, actually, what the, uh, the tools being used on her to, to cut part of her brain? She was able to, to see the nurses and hear the nurses uh, to, uh, talking to the uh, uh, brain surgeon, the brain surgeon giving instructions to, to the nurse and the other assistants. Huh? And, you know, she saw the, the, the truth, went through the tunnel and she saw the bright white light and uh, she met her loved ones. It's a perfect near-death experience, uh, which showed that it is possible to have a near-death experience when the brain is absolutely dead. Now, <clears throat> the twelfth area of evidence is that who is opposing the evidence for the near-death experience being linked with the, after, uh, with the afterlife? Well, it's the same people who are opposing the, uh, the, the uh, afterlife itself. It's the same uh, closed-minded skeptics who oppose the paranormal. It's the same people, the same closed-minded and skeptical debunkers who will not accept anything inconsistent with their own negative uh, uh, irrational beliefs. Why do you think they attack the near-death experiences? Because these, the evidence makes their their skeptical beliefs totally irrelevant, irrational, illogical. So, back to our first question. Are near-death experiences evidence for the afterlife? When you add the near-death experiences as evidence with the other 21 areas of afterlife evidence, clearly, without any doubt whatsoever, the near-death experiences evidence are evidence for the afterlife. Until next time, this is Victor Zanitz.